I'm not a sore loser. I was just very disappointed losing to him because I didn't like him. I'd been winded two or, two or three times, which leaves you exhausted anyway. My ribs were bruised. Um, I urinated blood for probably two, three days. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm in too much pain to talk, really. What? Pain? I'm in too much pain to talk. It was boxing at its rawest. I mean, that's the great core of, of the appeal of boxing, is it strips a man right down to the basics, where it's just, you know, one man's will against another man's will. And that fight, I think, um, personified that concept more than any other British fight that I've ever seen. Ben was still the people's champion, despite having lost his title, and the public demanded a rematch. But Eubank, now calling the shots, was making the most of the belt. Now look into the camera. Be prepared for the worst and hope for the best. I'm the man, and I, if, I get, if I decide to give the opportunity to fight me again, then uh, you should think yourself privileged. But as for now, I think I'll make you wait in the queue for a little while. It made sense for me as Nigel Benn moved into my camp as well, to build them separately. This rematch could happen at any time. No one was going to forget that fight. There was no rush. Whenever it did happen, it was going to be a huge, huge fight. And it was going to be a similar fight of, of, of desire and passion and danger. Eubank now looked towards someone who had actually been booked as the warm-up act to his title-winning fight. Yet Michael Watson, the only other man to have stopped Ben, was a force to be reckoned with, in the ring, if not outside it. Michael Watson was not box office. Uh, ben was box office, Eubanks was box office. I don't know what he got, um, Watson, but he wasn't box office. It was a, a harsh illustration, I think, of the way boxing works, you know, where the image that you present and the way you're packaged counts for so much more than, than what's in the package. His profile only really went up to national television side when he fought Eubank. Moving up to super middleweight, Eubank defended his world title, winning on a controversial points decision which only served to cement his status as the anti-hero of British boxing. Champion of the world, Greg Eubank! Do you think you deserved to win on Saturday? Yes, I did. I, f I fought a very good fight. I ran out of steam because I lost 11 pounds in three days. Yeah, you looked unfit. Yes. I'm not going to go into all of that. I just want to show Michael Watson that this belt belongs to me. And it's going to continue. Thank you. The likes of Michael Watson will not take my title. The rematch if he wants In fact, let me just say, right, because I'm quite... Um, are, uh, harassed by what these papers have been saying, but such is life. I can, I can understand that. Um, I'm going to write to the WBO myself, and I'm going to ask, ask them to um, uh, give Michael a rematch. Michael Watson was the people's champion, and I was a braggart, an upstart who needed to be stuck away, at least. This was the point of view that the newspapers had. And it seemed to me that the press had won at that particular point in time in making me the boxer, just into a boxer, into a nasty character. Um, and I really felt bad about that. And so that was so much more pressure for me in the second fight with him. Because I thought, well, if I lose to him, then it's just going to be believed that I'm just a horrible, nasty man, and I'm not. In front of 16 million viewers, the rematch ended in tragedy. Eubank, the man who had denounced boxing as barbaric, punched Watson into a coma. It was probably the most mentally horrendous time of my career because I lost eight of the 11 rounds and I scored with a punch. And in scoring, won the fight, but then left him paralyzed. Something had disappeared after the Watson fight, some instinct to, to finish. Not necessarily to finish an opponent, but perhaps thinking of how Watson himself was injured, where Watson was winning, went in to finish. And, and I think mentally that may have left a scar on Eubank that he was concerned about going in for the finish because of what happened to Michael. 
Eubanks' hate figure status now grew as he took on opponents who were not seen as credible, winning contests on more controversial points decisions. Hearn at the time, he, how can I put it, he, he, I think he lost his way. Chris Eubanks was picking his own opponents, and some of those opponents and some of those fights were bum fights. Might have done his bank balance a, a bit of a favour, but didn't do him any favours as far as credibility is concerned. And ladies and gentlemen, we got the unanimous decision. I did give him easy fights, and Eubank wasn't at his best in easy fights. Eubank needed the challenge. We, as the paying public, we don't have a right to watch a man kill himself every week. You have to have the odd war, of course you do, to sustain the interest. But then some days you go to work, it's an ordinary day at work, and some days it's a special day at work. The special days, however, come with special payment. And that was the whole reason behind building New Bank Ben 2. Come and fight me. Give the public what they want to see. Not all these John Jarvis has had seven fights in seven years. Fight someone like me who's been fighting all the time and who wants to have a fight with you. It might have a, a bigger effect on Nigel The people's champion had been quietly mounting a comeback. Still yearning for the chance to meet Eubank again, he was about to increase his marketability by winning a world title abroad for the second time in his career, beating an Italian in Italy to win the WBC super middleweight title. At ringside, there was an especially interested party. Oh, this is great. Well done. Now we can do business. Now we can do business. You hear me? Yeah, now we can do business. Chris, are we going to get this fight on? Uh, Nigel is accepted. I accept. I mean, let's do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm here. I'm ready. Please give the men the money. If they won't give you the money, then please compromise your... I'll compromise. I'll go and do what you do. Fight. Fight anyone. I'll go and look in the top 10 or maybe top 30 and bring them up from the top 30 and put them in the top 10. That's what I'll do. OK, well, I'm not going to argue. Anyway, we ain't going to say it. See you later on. Nigel was desperate. He wanted to beat Eubank because Eubank had beaten him, he's a very proud warrior, and he wanted his, he felt he was the superior world champion with the WBC being perceived in the business world as being a, a, a better belt, if you like, than WBO. Eubank was just pure money. Um, he gets paid for doing his job and he was confident of winning, so he was happy, and, and the fight and the deal was struck. Yes, we got it on. This is the fight. This is what the British public want to see. Matter of fact, this is what the boxing world wants to see. Eubank Ben 2 was the first ever fight between two British world champions, and the scale of the event demanded the involvement of American television. Don King's contract for the fight ensured boxing's biggest ever audience. It also promised him control not only of the winner of the fight, but also the loser. 